All right, what's up, guys? Um, it's Saber MLB back with another coaching video. Sorry, I've been slacking on the uploads a little bit. Um, I've just been really busy the last couple weeks with school starting up. So, uh, but here we got a coaching video for Hammett. And to start off, as always, we're going to go over lineup construction. Um, I know that this gameplay is pretty old, so his lineup has probably changed a lot since now. Uh, but in general, I really hate the three lefties in a row. Um, I also think just, just in general that this is a really lefty-heavy lineup because you go lefty, 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 um, and you don't have a lot of guys that can hit righties very well. So if you were platooning a couple of these guys, I don't hate this, but honestly, I would – obviously, yeah, his lineup has probably changed a lot, but I would definitely – if you're going to have this many lefties, at least space them out every other because this right here puts you at a huge disadvantage. You're six, six through nine and then one hole. So say you have like Hal Newhauser on the mound. You're facing lefty, 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 and then pitcher and then another lefty on the mound. That's like a really tough stretch for you to score in. So, um, all right, let's get into the game here. I wanted to talk about uh, your pitching a little bit just in this first inning, uh, especially with Lodolo. So Lodolo has, in my opinion, one of the nastiest, glitchiest sinkers in the game. It's like 93 miles an hour, but it it looks like it's like 102, honestly. Um, and pretty much this whole game, you really don't establish the sinker very much. You throw a lot of off-speed stuff, and... Uh, it seems like this guy wasn't really on a single sinker all game. Uh, Lodolo's a dude that you can really just spam sinker with. It's his primary pitch. It's his best pitch by far. Uh, and especially this guy has a lot of lefties in his lineup. There's nothing wrong with just throwing this guy sinkers until he hits it. So just wanted to point that out. Um, we'll go into some hitting stuff. So this is just like, this is personal preference stuff, but I wanted to point it out. I can like barely see your PCI right here. And I don't know if this is just like personal preference, like it helps you see the ball better out of the hand. But personally, I keep my opacity on like 70% because you still want to see where you're trying to put the ball. And I just feel like this is a little bit like too opaque for my liking. But this is all personal preference. If you really prefer this, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I also wanted to say something about your hitting camera, so you're on strike zone two or three. I'm not quite sure. Um, again, there's nothing wrong with it. I think that original strike zone is the best hitting camera. Uh, most of the best players use it. I think it offers the best view of pitches, but it also increases pitch speed. So just something to throw out. Maybe you try it for a couple games. Um, all right, we'll move on to 650. Uh, this is kind of just a general thing throughout this whole game. Both you and your opponent are late on pretty much every sinker that's thrown. And with guys like Kluber and Lodolo on the mound, sinker primary pitchers, you're really going to be wanting to sit sinker. Um, and even now in the game cycle, most top tier pitchers have sinkers. You're going to be wanting to sit fastball it's much easier to sit fast and react slow than it is to sit slow and react fast. So um, you really, like, I've noticed both you and your opponent um, really have trouble sitting on the sinker. And there you timed that one up pretty well. But just in general throughout this whole game, just really try to be on the sinker, even if you flail at some off speed. It's really worth it. So, all right. I wanted to go to 840 because this is a big spot in the game, and I think you made a really good decision here. So, you've got bases loaded, one out with Lodolo batting, and he puts the infield in. This is 100,000% of the time, this is a strikeout, an intentional strikeout. Um, and you do that, and honestly, it's just the best thing you could have done. Uh, and a lot of people really don't do this. A lot of people like to just swing away with their pitchers, but this is definitely a spot where, even though it's Kenny Lofton up to bat, your chances of getting on base with Kenny Lofton are 
what, 50, 60 percent higher than your chances of getting on base with your pitchers. So, um, all right. We'll move ahead a little bit. Yeah, so uh, this at bat, you've got Trout up with two outs uh, in the inning, and he's 3 0 on you. Now, I, I don't like swinging 3 0, um, but here's what happens. So he basically hoses you a sinker 3 0. He obviously doesn't want to walk you. This is a really good spot to take a hack. Uh, even though the best thing that can happen is a solo shot, this is a 0 0 game, and so a solo shot is a game changer, quite literally. Uh, you know there's like a 95% chance right here that you're getting another sinker down the middle, um, and that's pretty much what happens. I don't even hate taking this pitch. I just think that this is a spot where you can get aggressive. Um, and the entire game, this guy is pitching very traditionally, so he's been going sinkers and fastballs until two strikes and then slurves and change-ups uh, and two strike counts, and he does the same thing here. So you can basically bet that that's going to be a fastball coming in in that 3-1 count. So I like swinging in 3-1 counts, especially with a guy like Trout who hits righties really well. So, okay, go on to some, some more pitching stuff here. Um, I wanted to talk about this at-bat because this is a huge at-bat. Uh, Nolan Jones hits a home run here and to give him the lead. You threw a sinker first pitch, and he was too late on it. And you go straight to the slider, and especially okay, especially lefty lefty right here. Well, Dolo is one of the toughest lefty lefty pitchers with his sinker. I would honestly be throwing this guy all sinkers, uh, even though he's way out in front of that slider. So what ends up happening? You spot, you throw this changeup below the zone. Honestly, really good pitch, like feedback, but um, you kind of got screwed on the RNG. That changeup went nowhere near where you threw it. But that's just what happens when you throw off speed this year. Uh, I think lefty lefty, you can be attacking sinker right there and make him hit it because he didn't hit it this entire game. So we'll skip way ahead to so this kind of goes back to what I was saying with uh, how your opponent is pitching this game. Your opponent is like pitching extremely traditionally, uh, meaning he's going fast until he has two strikes and then he's going slow. Um, and this at bat's no different. He's spamming sinkers basically. Um, yeah. And you do a good job to work the count here and see your pitch. But this is the spot that I wanted to talk about. So now you're 2-2. Two, two. You can almost bet that he's going to throw you a slurve. The every, almost every at-bat that you've gotten in a two-strike count, he's throwing you a slurve right here. And that's what ends up happening. And you have to swing at it because you were stealing, and there's two strikes. So uh, going back to this steal, too. I think that this is a pretty bad spot to steal, in my opinion. I think if you're going to steal, and there's nothing wrong with stealing with one out in the fifth and Kenny Lofton on base, I just think that if you're going to steal, you need to do it earlier in this count because by by stealing in a 2-2 two and two count, you are pretty much obligated to swing at this pitch even though it's not in the zone. And that ends up causing a, a double play to end the inning, so... And we'll skip ahead to 24. Yeah, so this is uh, this is a great at-bat right here. Um, it's a 1-1 game in the sixth. You got Trout up. So he goes fastball. And then I think he throws you another off-speed pitch right here, which is a little outside of his MO, which is weird. But you do a great job right here of recognizing that all game he's been giving you off-speed in the two strike counts. 0-2. Gives you a change up loan in and just freaking mash it. Great at bat. Really good recognition of picking up that tendency right there. Um, yeah. And then we'll go 34. Yeah, there there honestly there isn't much else I wanted to talk about in this game. It was a pretty low scoring game. I think this is what the game finishes at, but there is one more thing I wanted to touch on.
Yeah, so I wanted to talk about you're in the ninth right here. You've got Chapman on the mound. He's flailing. Um, this is just a really good read from you. So you get him in an uh, 0-2 count, and I don't know how you knew he was stealing. I mean, he did take a lead off, but this is just a great slide step right here. You hold it to slide step, and he's dead to rights, and that basically cost him any chance of coming back right there. That was the go-ahead run at the plate, and now instead of the go-ahead run at the plate, the game tying run is at the plate, and it's a lefty-lefty matchup. This is another reason I would never bat lefties back-to-back -back because, like, in this situation, when you're down one run, you have Chapman on the mound. I'm at least going to pinch it for one of these guys because it's such a big disadvantage. But either way, great read on that slide step. Um, and to kind of wrap it up, I think you end up winning this game. Uh, Pitching-wise... Uh, I thought you did a really good job pitching, honestly, throughout this game. I didn't show a lot of it because there wasn't too much to talk about. Um, Location-wise, you're pretty good with analog pitching. Um, I just think that you try and mix it up a little bit too much, and I see a lot of players doing this. Um, I've touched in it, on it on almost all of my coaching videos. Um, a lot of players think that mixing up your pitches well is the best way to pitch and the most effective way to pitch, and I think that trying to figure out where your opponent's bat speed is and throwing the opposite of where their bat speed is at is the most effective way to pitch. And if that means throwing only sinkers, that's what I mean, you know? Um, I think you really stayed away from throwing sinkers and fastballs this game, and I think especially around this rating, you really need to establish the sinker and fastball because, um, I mean, both of you guys were pretty much late on every sinker that was thrown this game, so it's really important to establish that sinker so it actually sets up the off-speed stuff. Besides that, your pitching was really good. Your situational awareness was really good in this game, like with that um, pitch out. Uh, and then hitting-wise, um, the only thing I had was just really sitting on that fastball because I think that that's the best way to hit this year and pretty much every year is sit on the fastball. Uh, and try to pick up those opponent tendencies. Uh, you did later in the innings, did a good job of that. But really just trying to notice that he is pitching super traditionally, throwing almost all off speed in two strike counts, and you can use that to your advantage. So overall, I think that you have some room to improve, but I think if you put some of, some of this stuff into use, then it'll make you a lot better. So hopefully any of this helped. Um, I'll try and get back to uploading some gameplay and stuff. It's just been crazy with school and everything. So thanks for watching, guys.